My name is Mark Chalmers, and I'm president and CEO of Energy Fuels. And Energy Fuels is a critical mineral company that produces both uranium, rare earths, um, and some isotopes like radium-226. So a uh, very uh, different play than any play you have. But if you're interested in um, decarbonization, electrification, Energy Fuels is uh, a very interesting play. But Mike, hello and welcome to Barcelona. I'm saying that like hey. I live here. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, small. you dress. You got the the white shirt on, right? I'm trying to look, I'm trying to look continental and interesting. <laughs> I'm failing <laughs> miserably, uh, but not a bad backdrop to have this conversation. But this serious business is all downstairs. Rare Earth Conference, uh, for the Rare Earth Association are here, much busier than last year. By the look. Oh yeah, I, I mean, there's. I think um, they've got uh, increased their membership by almost fifty or almost double their membership. Wow. wow. So uh, they're, they're like 60 members now. Right. And that's, again, big, and that's kind of a reflection of this. This market has been sewn up by the Chinese for a long time now. And I think therein lies some of the challenge for Western companies and countries. Skill sets seem to reside in China. Are we going to have the people available to actually build out this kind of rare earth sector of ours? That's a good question, Yvette. Um, you know, I think we're on the back foot. And when you look at China, particularly with rare earths, you know, this has been a priority for them for the last 20 years. And with that, they've graduated a lot of engineers. Um, they've got a lot of factories and know-how that um, uh, is advancing quickly. And we're starting from kind of a cold start over the last two or three years. So uh, we've got a long ways to go. But, but I tell people that you, you can't be anti-China here because if you're anti-China, there aren't going to be enough uh, of these products to have these electric vehicles. I mean, if you just wiped out the China uh, dimension, so we really actually need to thank China so that we have some of these permanent magnet motors that, that are in these electric vehicles today. Well, it seems, seems to be, it's not a case of anti-China, it seems to be think like China, build your own ecosystems, be in control of your own destiny. Yeah. Well, I think I think it, it all kind of ties together with, um, you know, this whole, you know, the, the ramifications of complete globalization. And and now, you know, people are looking at deglobalizing to some extent um, and recognizing the importance of having at least basic capabilities in a number of these areas that we, we no longer have. Right. And I think the other thing to, to note, certainly some of the messaging sort of downstairs that I'm hearing, is it's a fairly nascent industry, as you say, that, you know, we're worried about uh, skill sets. We're also worried about how does this, how do all these things get financed, right? Because it's it's new, companies aren't meaningfully advanced, and there's no kind of certainty around pricing, there's no certainty around supply, there's no certainty around much. Yeah, so the bankers are a little bit, uh, bankers like me, a little bit nervous. Yeah, well, the I, I, I think that what I'm seeing, or at least at this conference, is it's fragmented, right? There's a lot of companies that have jumped in, agree. And, and they're small, and they only have a certain amount of capacity, certain amount of expertise, and I think what, what, what the OEMs and the car manufacturers want to see is consolidation so they have some critical mass to deal with. And with that, hopefully you can pull the expertise together, the capacity to finance, um, the, 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 you know, the, the ability to produce material quantities, all those things will come with consolidation. So I think that what I've seen over the last couple of years is a lot of the smaller guys have this aspiration they're going to be able to do it all. Yeah. And I think the realization to now, the last couple of days, is they're not going to be able to. They're not going to be able to, but I think there's also a realization of the cost involved. It ain't simple. It's, it's a very technical uh, thing we're dealing with here. Rare, rare us ain't easy, right? Not just because the skill sets aren't there, because it's, it's just not easy for anyone. Yeah. I, I, I think, guess with that dawning realization of, Maybe this is going to take a little bit longer, and maybe it's going to take a little bit more money than we realize. They're going to kind of want to come up with new plans, new ways of working. Now, we can't help but notice you have a rather large plant in the sort of White Mesa out there, which may be the answer to some people's prayers. Are you having any conversations around maybe working with some other groups? I, I, I find that, that, again, some of these smaller players that had these aspirations of doing all this themselves uh, are, are coming to ground. And... Um, and, and look, I find places like Australia, the inflation in Australia, the, the shortage of people is probably the most acute of any place I've seen in the whole world right now. And um, yeah, we have a facility. It's, it's fully paid for. It's permitted. Um, we're advancing um, this year and we'll be ready early next year. 
for what we call our phase one separation. And we're going to do that for like $25 million. And and what, what I've heard here the last couple of days that people that were talking about projects that were 500 or 800 or 900 million dollars two years ago are now having two billion dollars or you know somewhere in that order and 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 that that's a shocker and i think that's getting a lot of people's attention because they just realized they're not going to be able to get there um like they had planned to get there it's a shocker if you're a hundred million dollar company because i tell you as an next banker i'm looking at that thing going not on in any uh, stretch of imagination is that thing going to be talked about, let alone we're trying to find a way to finance that? So it's a problem. So coming back to the sort of change of model, I think there's some stepping stones going to be needed for the companies that can actually get to the point where they actually can extract minerals um, and maybe treat it as an it, it, it sort of it, these in, into these stepping stones as a bridge to getting where they want to be over time. And that's fine. It's a nascent industry. Yeah. We're all learning. It's, it's good. Yeah, I think, look, I think it's going to be a combination of some of these these companies scaling back their plans, uh, deciding if they're going to just make a, uh, like an intermediate product or a, or, or a mine product, um, or they'll be consolidated. I think it's going to take a, a number of different ways to get there. So um, from our perspective, um, you know, our limiting factor thus far hasn't been infrastructure. It's been molecules. Uh, we're talking, we're still talking to a number of people. We talked to a number of people here at this conference. And uh, we're looking at how we can get that scale to fill the plant that we're building. Right. Okay. Now, I've got, I've got, to, got to talk about the role of government here. Now, we talked in the past in the context of uranium about you know, getting government interested in uranium uh, as, a, as a kind of primary base load source. Uh, yes, government kind of stepped up to play a little bit. And I think governments around the world are starting to do the same thing. So the, on the uranium side, we've seen government's involvement starting to work. Rare us, it, part of the kind of credible minimum critical minerals infrastructure ecosystem that we we're, we um, talk about every week. Um, do governments recognize the need to support miners in this space? Industry, we're seeing a lot of things like the Inflation Reduction Act. We saw money being distributed towards uh, industry for critical minerals, but miners haven't yet necessarily been the beneficiaries of that. Do, do you see that coming? Well, I think the, the main beneficiaries have been the lithium uh, groups they seem to have got the most money out of government um, and the industry. You know, like some of the car manufacturers have gone downstream. Um, I think that inflation reduction actually getting a lot of playtime, but um, at the same time, uh, to to do that, you've got to go back into mining, right? At least at least some of these things like copper and uranium and and the rare earths in the United States. And and I think there's still some challenges with the government because it's kind of like the NIMBY thing, not in my backyard. And um, I think that has to change because you're not going to get there if you um, don't allow some of these bigger projects to go forward. And so I think the government, I think the good news is everybody's realizing we've got a problem mission control here. Yeah. It's a problem. And we've got to do things different. But I don't think everybody's come across the line yet realizing that we've got to get back into those basic industries of mining in the United States. And we can't cancel or delay um, or frustrate. Um, some of the biggest projects that can actually come online quickest. The the big problem here is not that that disconnect between you know, government's understanding is is the supply and demand gap is getting bigger every week. I seem to get a bigger and bigger number than the week before, right? Yeah, and which, which is which is great. It's very very encouraging. But there's there's a going to there's a kind of very uh, infl- inflection point which is going to be missed because miners take a long time to get into production. We get a bit of a wind. Go actually here, folks. Uh, so hopefully the noise is okay. Um, it takes a long time to get it. Well, it takes a long time to find it. It yeah. like, takes a long time to get funded to actually get it out of the grounds, right? Yeah. And then um, and that whole that whole kind of process of time it can be t- it can be seven to fifteen years. That gap that we're seeing at the moment with critical minerals and and and, and for rare us it, it ain't it ain't gonna be there. Yeah, you you got to be able to respond. Yeah, and and um, you know a lot of these projects that you you see out there, I mean they were explored for uh, ten years, twenty years ago, and there was there was five or ten years of just exploration alone to define them, and you still have to permit them, you still have to build them, you got to get them commissioned, but yeah, I see the gap. Uh, widening as you do, um, I think there's going to be project failures that people don't really uh, incorporate. Yeah, it's a huge one. It's a huge one. 
it's and, and by that what we're saying is that companies that say they're going to get into production and even start the process of trying to get into production sometimes fall over and that affects your supply numbers yeah, yeah. you know yeah I, I think um look there's a lot of dynamics playing here um i don't think i have ever um seen it uh, be the urgency rising like ever before that in my career that we need these elements and um but i also see some train wrecks coming and I think that um, some of the, 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 the end users here that, that get in position soonest with, with some of the best opportunities are going to be best positioned. And, uh, but it is difficult because some of these end users don't know what a good opportunity is. And they may be sold a bill of goods and promises that will never be delivered. So, so look, I think that our company is ideally positioned with our infrastructure, with our um, our balance sheet, our location in the United States, and um, our plan to be able to do this in some 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 steps that we can afford and we can pay for, and we can do right now, fully funded for, uh, and then we'll grow from there and we'll work with other parties uh, to get there. But at scale, you know, we're not doing looking small here. We're looking big. But, you know, I've said this to you before, we'll be, we'll be uh, aggressive, but not reckless. Right. And, and, and just the other kind of factor, I guess, um, in here for you guys in terms of that blended risk uh, approach, which is rare us. You're talking the game of, and I'm, I'm being interested, I should actually ask you, you know, what were the kind of useful conversations and the useful um, talks that you heard downstairs that in terms of this, how do we get this fragmented market of ours into something that was coherent and and works, I mean, we'll deal with that in a second, but I just want to talk to you about some of the other things that are going on in the business. Obviously, uranium, it's still there, market's moving, it's interesting times, prices, you know, sitting around, I think last week, 57 bucks. Yeah. It's starting to get there, isn't it? Well, it just keeps inching up. And yeah. um, uh, you know, we signed um, some pretty substantial contracts uh, going back almost a year ago, and uh, we planned and, and are continuing to to look at other opportunities to sign up more contracts. But yeah, it needs to inch up like into the 70s at least. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's getting there. And I think when when uh, the prices creep up, so do equities. Yeah, and I, well, well, we'll 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 see how it plays out. Maybe we'll have another conversation around the, the uranium because I think so much has changed um, over the past couple of months, and it's that coiled spring that we talk about. Seems tighter than ever before. I think it's going to smash rather than explode. <laughs> it's going to break it. Uh, vanadium, obviously, is still in still in the background, sitting on a bit of inventory there, and obviously the isotope stuff is it, 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 it'll move when it moves, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, as a critical mineral company, you know, most companies that you would talk to are doing like one element. You know, they're doing yeah. lithium, they're doing graphite, or cobalt. Um, if they're rare earths, they're looking at NDPR and maybe DYTB. Um, but, but we're, we're looking at where we currently can produce or are, are putting ourselves in the position to produce over 10 of these critical elements. So, um, you know, we think that's just going to give us and our investors some diversification, uh, that is really exciting. Right. And then back to the question I should have asked you most earlier, which was in terms of the conversations we hear, you, you said you were talking to, um, groups perhaps want to maybe send some molecules your way through White Mesa. What are the other conversations in t that you wanted to have, and you know, have they gone the way you expected them to? In terms of that man understanding the supply chain um, in this kind of fragmented market that we're, that we're in. Well, I think what's pleasing to me is that over the last few years that we've been in this rare earth space, that a number of these players that we talked to early on that kind of went off yeah. are coming back. Yeah. And because they, they've, they've had to modify, as we said, their, their, their strategy and their, their business plan. Um, they're recognizing that they're going to need to get more finance than they thought. Um, and to do that, they need, uh, at the very minimum, a stepping stone. Yeah. A stepping stone to show um, whoever is financing them that they have a revenue stream that's building and they've got, a, you know, some sort of arrangement uh, with somebody like us. So um, I, I think I think that's the key thing. And I think that, uh, you know, you know, it's easy to talk, but it's it's tough to get things done. And, and we're a company of doers. And um, and I think, you know, you, you have to have doers because talk doesn't get you anywhere. Do you think some of those talkers have kind of had a, had a brick wall? As I understand, they realize, well, m maybe we need to 
reach out or maybe we need to change tack or actually maybe the 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 old man carrying the scythe is at the other side of that wall <laughs> yeah well i i look and i think it's 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 sweating itself out and and if you look at how kind of new the rare earth industry is and in, in particularly outside of china um you know people have big plans and they listed companies and and they raised some money and they, they found a deposit and then when they start doing all the studies, and particularly with inflation and everything, yeah. they realize they have to do a different plan. And um, um, you know, and that's when you can you can change things. When people realize that that you know you can't all be greedy and think you're going to get there. Um, and how do you you, know, you kind of join forces in different ways um, to get that critical mass? I mean, the market needs. You know, you've got you got MP, you got Linus, and you got Luca, and you got us and Neo Performance. Um, the market is looking for, uh, you know, another three or four companies to take a leadership position here and provide an option um, for some of these these off um, off users or users of the the, the, the product. Yeah. What's interesting to me is that the automobile uh, groups are used to having ten suppliers yeah. of just about everything. Right. There you go. And and now they're looking at it and they're going, we're we're having a hard time finding a single supplier. Yeah. But that, that 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 comes back to like you know, just in time mentality versus inventory, where you know the, the market we use it well, we we'll just go to battle trader. We'll get what we need there. It's fine, no problem. Like now, it's like we've got to move upstream. We've seen it with the automotive. You talked you referenced lithium there, but I think there's 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 other commodities that are starting to benefit from that uh, mentality too. Um, talk, talking which is um, you've you heard a kind of few good speeches downstairs, um, and. You know, and words, again, this is in the context of this fragmented market thing. You're looking for a few new leaders. Is it going to come from government? Is it going to come from in- industry sorting itself out? Because there's that kind of commercial imperative with with industry, which is, makes it harder. But he, he's going to grab this thing and say, "Look, we, we need to get organized, guys." Yeah. Is there? Any- well, we're going to grab our own strategy okay. because we. we I think if you if you have to wait for somebody else to fix your problems, you you've got a problem. So, but um, yeah, we're grabbing the the the, the wheel on the bus. Um, I think that certainly these these end users, the government can help, but we're grabbing the wheel and we're driving the bus. And um, uh, and if if we have some support that is beneficial to us, we'll certainly consider it. Mark, good to see him, and I'm glad it's going well. I mean, everyone is really stoked. What I've heard, if everyone was speaking to, you know, I, I, I imagine some will have a few more difficult problems to sort out, but um, general mood is positive, rare us, here to stay. Well, if you want efficient uh, electric vehicles, yes, they're here to stay.